G'day again. I bought too much Temu stuff and I spent far too long going through our strawberry planter than I should have. But it's interesting and be fun to see how it turns out. Anyway, we need to continue on and get the rest of our goodies unpacked. So I will now hand over to the earlier cultivating curmudgeon. It's me. All yours. Next. A purple shovel. I'm always losing my shovels, so I thought, why not get a really cheap, nasty one from our Chinese friends that if I lose, it doesn't really matter. And it's a colour that's going to make it harder to lose. Never saw the point of making gardening tools green. Why would you want them green? It means when you put them down, you can find, never find them again. Anyway, so I got a purple one. Would have got a red one, because red ones are faster, as we all know. But it is cheap. It looks reasonably solid, but I don't think it'll last terribly long. And the back of the handle is awful. So it's not a comfortable grip or anything, but it's only going to be used for digging out a little bit of fertilizer or uh, potting mix or whatever. So just a cheap little shovel to use around. I have seen these all over the place. Some people say they're really good, so I thought I'd try it. Price is up there, but it wasn't that expensive. And I've got a lot of knives that need sharpening, so you'll never guess what it is. It's one of these rolly rolly knife sharpeners, and we'll have a shot of that in a minute, see how it goes. But I've tried all kinds of things for sharpening knives, and they're either too complex or they don't work. So this has a magnet on it, 20 degrees and 15 degrees. It has a 400 grit and a 1000 grit side. I didn't notice. It comes with instructions. Actually, the instructions aren't too bad. All right. So we will have a look at that in a minute. Here is a knife. And it's not terribly sharp. All right, so here we go. We're going to do the, the 20 degree. This knife's a bit long. Take the protective cover off. This is our 400 grit. And we shall roll it along. Okay, first issue, long knife. When it gets here, it's bending. So I'm gonna to have to do it in two, two passes. So just do this bit first. Yeah, it's not really easy. Turn around. Doesn't feel sharp. Not impressed. Doesn't appear very good. Not sure it was doing much at all, but. Next, we have a white box. And I got this for the same reason as I got the other one. And it is just simply an old fashioned sharpening stone. This one is got a little rubber stand. Now I forget exactly what grits are on this one. Does it tell me? Nope. It doesn't. I'll have to look it up and I'll let you know up with the price. It'll be very interesting to try this out. I just use a bit of water on it. Ooh. So there's a coarse and a fine. Looks okay. Interesting to see how well it does. And it does have a nice little rubber stand to sit on. So that we will also give a shot with some of our... Ah, oh, there we go. It's written on the side. 240 and 1000. So sort of a mid-range. Get some of our old knives and see if it does anything. But in the meantime, let's give this a shot. Should let these soak for a while actually I believe but this will do us for now. I'm probably not doing this the right way but 
I'm not a professional knife sharpener. Has that improved it at all? Yes, it's a little bit better. I'm gonna go and watch some YouTube videos on how to sharpen knives correctly. Because I honestly don't know. I might be blunting them. Probably am. Okay, so we'll do that properly later on. What's our next thing? Ah, yes. I've been buying lots of LED lights and the lady commodian is looking at me as if I've spent too much money again. No. no. I have. Okay. Uh, this one I won't use straight away, but I wanted to keep an extra one floating around. I've used it before in Bruce the Greenhouse and it's just a roll of LED uh, lights. So we'll turn that on and see what it's like in a sec. Um, but it should be a self-adhesive like the last lot. Yep. So it's got a self-adhesive backing so we can just stick it around. Good old Bruce. And I think it's gonna work better than the uh, ones I bought on a stand. Next. We have a plastic trellis. Now I got this for the tomatoes. I'm going to be running an experiment which I should be able to set up tomorrow, but you won't see it for a long, long time. What I'm going to do is I've got some felt bags which I'm going to put standard potting mix in, just the Osmocote I always use. And I'm going to put some store-bought tomato seedlings in them. One in each. I'll do two pots with just the potting mix. I will do two pots with lots of organic fertilizers like cow manure, blood and bone, a bit of the potash, organic potash I've got. And we'll see how they grow. And the third one I'm going to the third one I'm going to be evil. And I'm going to use chemicals. Well actually not harmful chemicals. I'm just going to use MPK, some of the Thrive liquid fertilizer, um, no organic stuff, and just see. Which of the three ways grows best? I have no intention of going down the chemical path, but I just want to see how it compares. But unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until the tomatoes grow and fruit, if they do fruit, to find out if that's any good. That's off track. What I actually bought was this, which is a cheapy little trellis that I'll use on those tomatoes uh, to um, hold them up. And we'll use the same one on all three, I hope, uh, if there's enough here. So everything in them will be identical. So I'll put that together and we can have a look to see if it's going to be useful. Does it have instructions? That's a good point. Nothing. We're going to have to look it up on the website to see what it's meant to look like. So we shall do that and we'll see how it goes. So these little trestles I bought, which are much smaller than they looked on um, the Temu site, but I'm just going to use it for my mushroom experiment. Now I'll just sit in the pot like so. It seemed to be reasonable plastic. I might actually try putting another one on. So if I want to make it wider, uh, we can just clip it on here. And push that down in there. Yeah, it looks okay. Again, wasn't terribly expensive, so we'll we'll give that a shot with our tomato experiment uh, and see how that goes. As I said, cheap, not too flimsy. I think it's okay. All right, one more. I think this is our last item, and I won't do it in here because it's too big. I'll have to do it outside. It's nice waiting till tomorrow and it's a poly tunnel my aim for this is to get something that's really subject to uh, insects and pests like cabbage broccoli those sort of things where we get lots of white fly and cabbage cabbage moss on it and 
try using this to get them established a little better. Uh, it comes with a metal frame. Let's get it out. I forget how long it is, but you can see it's sort of an okay diameter. But I'll put the, the length of it up there. We'll set up in the morning just out on the lawn and just see what it looks like. All right, we shall go tunneling. So got my poly tunnel here, just taking these little covers off the prongs. Let's see how much it'll cover. Uh, we'll start here. The wires aren't terribly strong. Well, that's not a bad length, is it? Price is up there. I better check and I'll put something in about whether it's worth it or not once I've got the price. But if I put this on one of my raised beds and cover my cabbages or cauliflowers in the early days, it should keep the white fly down. Plastic's pretty cheap, but I don't know. Doesn't look too bad. Well, I reckon that's quite a mixed bag. The felt strawberry planters, which were in a previous video, um, they seem pretty good. I'm hoping that we'll actually uh, get them to grow quite well, as long as I put them in the right place. The polytunnel, for the price, yeah, good. Um, and it should protect the uh, veggies from some of the insects anyway, and maybe over winter keep them warm. So I'm quite happy with that one. The trellis was much smaller than I expected, but I really should pay a lot more attention to the uh, uh, the measurements that they give you on Temu, because it would have given it away. Um, in all, the sharpening stones, I think I'm still going to be looking for ways to sharpen knives properly. If you've got any suggestions, please let me know. How do you sharpen your knives and secateurs and scissors? All those sort of things. What works? I really am struggling with that. But the rolling one looks like complete and utter rubbish. Uh, the knife bends as you use it. And the sharpening stone, well, it's just a sharpening stone. Uh, luckily, they were free, which is why I got them, actually. But I did need to buy all that other stuff to get to the minimum order. Anyway, let me know what you think of these goodies. Put some comments below in the videos. I'd really like to hear from you. So, that's that. Another Temu time is done, and no doubt I will be back buying more junk. So, enjoy life. And stop spending money at Temu and I'll catch you in the garden.